Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm checking out this. This is the All Powers R600 version 3 600 watt power station. It only weighs 12 pounds and it's super compact. And I intend to use this to charge my drones at the park. In the box, we have some very hard gray foam to protect this from shipping damage. We've got some product literature and we've got our warranty card. Next, we have a pouch. Inside the pouch, we have a power cable. This is an American power cable, and I suspect you get a different cable depending on your country. And finally, we have a power station. So really not much in the box. Before we start, I do wanna highlight that there are different versions of this power station, and All Powers has been making improvements based on comments from the community. And you can see here, mine is the R600 version three. The latest version is the one that does not have any barrel connectors over here. It has two plugs and also the plugs are the correct way around. The ground plug is facing down. That's how you know you have the latest version. This power station is quite light and small. It weighs just over 12 pounds and measures just over 11 by seven by seven inches. The battery that it has is a lithium iron phosphate battery. That technology is a little bit more safe, less prone to fire, and also gives you more battery cycles. So you can recharge it over and over again without battery degradation. So it has almost a 300 watt hour battery. It does support the Bluetooth um, application. So you can use the Bluetooth app from all powers to modify and monitor this. It also does support a UPS uninterruptible power supply functionality with a 10 millisecond transfer time. That's not bad for what this is, but do bear in mind that more dedicated UPSs from things like CyberPower or APC, those transfer over in about four milliseconds. So this is quite a bit slower, but good enough. On the right side of the unit, we've got our inputs. We have AC along with a solar and car input. It's under this plastic cover. So we can take a look at this. This is your normal AC input, similar to a computer power supply. And then we have an XT60 input, which my followers should be pretty familiar with this type of input. We use this all the time on our drones. You got that input for a car cigarette lighter or for the solar panels. All the outputs are at the front. We have a 12 volt, 10 amp car cigarette lighter output. We've got two outputs for AC power, 100 to 120 volts, 600 watts but surging up to 1200, that's quite good for a charger of this size. We have some nice rubber silicone style of dust covers. Then on this side, we have our DC output. So we have USB type C and USB type A, 100 watts, 100 watts. So this can do 200 watts at the same time or 18 watts, 18 watts, that's perfect. We have our beautiful display there. We have a emergency light and then on the top, kind of hiding away here is we have a wireless charger that can do 15 watts. And what I like is the top is nice and flat. So you can put your phone on there while you're using this as well. Turning this on for the first time, let's hold down the power button. And we see that it does turn on quite quickly and it has 5% battery. So we will need to actually plug this in and charge it up. I just plug this into charge and we can see that right now it is charging at 267 watts over here. I have this set through the app to charge at the fastest setting, which is 400 watts. I suspect once the battery starts to get some charge in there, it will ramp up. And right now it's telling me it will take an hour to recharge. So that's, that's pretty impressive to go from 5% to 100% in hopefully less than an hour. It's only been a couple of minutes and the power station is now charging at full input power, which is 410 watts over there. And it's whisper quiet. So you can see it comes up around 39 or 40 decibels, which my iPad tells me is rustling leaves. Now let's go ahead and connect this heat gun to the power station. This is rated at 1200 watts, but it's got two power settings. So I'm gonna turn it on at the low power setting and we can keep an eye on the voltage and see what happens. It holds pretty stable, still around 110. It did go up and down a little bit, but still holding decently. Now, if I go full power, which is 1200 watts, we'll see what happens. Full power. So as expected, our voltage dropped to about 100. And then after a couple seconds, this thing went into overload, which again, it's only rated for 1200 watts. 
in the search capacity. So it seemed to run it for a couple of seconds, which to me, that's search capacity. Now we can do exact same test and keep an eye on the frequency. So this should run at 60 Hertz. Right now it's pretty much 60. Let's go lowest setting. So that's holding pretty stable. Let's go highest setting. Lowest setting, highest setting, lowest setting, highest setting, lowest setting, and then finally off. Okay, not too bad. For the next test, I want to run the power station from 100% battery all the way down to 0%. So I've got my trusty heat gun. I'm running the heat gun at the lowest setting, which is 460 watts. And we can see at this wattage, the power station estimates we'll get about 36 or 37 minutes of runtime. Now you can see in the iPad, I managed to get about 34 minutes before the power station shut the power down. So once the battery got to 5%, the power station automatically turned off the AC output and you cannot turn it back on. So I think if we were able to run this down to 0%, which you cannot, but if you could, 36, 37 minute estimates sounds about right. Given that we got that high temperature warning on the screen in the last test, I wanna rerun that test. So taking the battery from 100% down to 0% without having the heat gun on top of the unit. So let's go ahead and rerun this. I'm gonna push the power button and as soon as the heat gun starts, I'm gonna start the timer. And we're off. So we can see it says about 36 minutes of runtime. We're 33 minutes in and I can see I'm getting this heat warning once again. Everything still works fine, but that is quite interesting. We just hit 5% battery remaining, so the AC power did shut off, and very impressively, we got nearly identical runtime as the first test, 34 minutes. Let's go ahead and see how much noise this unit produces when under full load. So right now, my ambient noise level is about 30 decibels is the ambient noise. Right now we're pulling 550 watts from the unit, which is very close to maximum capacity. And our noise level right next to the unit is about 50 decibels, which tells me it is a quiet home. So noise wise, not too bad. The good thing with this unit is that the fan inside actually ramps up and down based on the output level here. So right now our output has dropped quite a bit and you can see the fan is practically off. So we're back to about 30 decibels right now. To use the Bluetooth app, you have to first turn on the actual Bluetooth. You do that by holding down the DC power button. You will get the Bluetooth icon. Next, you open up the app and you have to add your device and you have to do this every single time you close the app. So a little bit frustrating, but it's quite quick. So we'll just say next. It'll automatically find the device and it finds the device very, very quickly. And then once we connect to the device, we can see its status up here. And then we can turn on the AC output. We can turn on the DC output. So you see those turn on. We can turn the light on and off. So it's quite responsive. But really that's all you can do with the app. So it's nice that it has it, but not very useful. You do have a couple of settings over here where you can change the work mode from mute, standard, or fast. All this really does is it determines how quickly the battery recharges, but it doesn't actually change the noise output of the unit. So a little bit weird, and I don't understand why you would have anything other than fast. You can also purchase a solar panel kit from All Powers, and the solar panel allows you to recharge the power station through the power of the sun. I got the 140 watt version of the panel, which unfortunately in our Canadian fall weather, only gave me about 75 to 85 watts of recharge power. Not too bad given the time of year. What I really like is that the solar panel kit folds up really nicely into a easily transportable configuration. Once you open it up, it even has a stand that helps you properly direct the panel to the angle of the sun. So this is quite nifty, especially for summertime charging. I was very impressed with this All Powers R600 power station. This thing is super light, compact, and powerful. Now, just to put that into perspective, when I compare this with my computer UPS from CyberPower, this unit here gives me three times the runtime, yet it weighs half as much. That's just incredible. 
And working with this over the last couple of weeks, it has been a very smooth and consistent experience. The only area that requires a bit more work is the Bluetooth app. The app works fine as you saw me demonstrate, but the experience just feels a little bit unpolished, especially when you have to keep setting up the connection every time you close the app. So all powers, spend a bit of time on the app there. Otherwise, highly recommend this unit. If you are interested in picking this unit up, All Powers did provide me with a 10% off coupon code in the video description that you can use for your purchase. Hopefully you like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.